What is faster? A cheap wheel fitted with an expensive tyre or an expensive wheel fitted with a cheap tyre? We're going to do some tests so that we can find out which makes the biggest difference, upgrading your wheels or upgrading your tyres. I really hope it's your tyres because, I mean, they cost way less. Right, our test is a simple one and I've had to draft in what some people would describe as a glamorous assistant. Yeah. His name's Ollie. So Ollie is going to ride on our undulating test course at a constant power for each of the different setups that we're testing today. Now his bike's fitted with a power meter and the beautiful coastal road we're using is representative of what we feel many viewers will be regularly cycling on. Now I should point out we've got no vested interest here. We simply don't know which setup is going to be fastest but we're going to find out. And yes, our test isn't free of variables. There are quite a few things out of our control, but we don't have infinite time and infinite resources to make it as thorough as possible. However, by subscribing to the channel and helping support us, it can help us grow so that in the future, we could perhaps make tests like this even more thorough. But all of that said, we are going to get some really meaningful data from this experiment, which should give us a good indicator of which setup is the fastest. The posh wheels we're using are these, and fitted to our posh wheels are some pretty cheap and crap tyres that cost just £15 each. And our cheap wheels are these. They're typical of what you would find fitted to most entry-level or mid-spec bikes and a wheel set like this will typically cost you significantly less than £500. Now fitted to our cheap wheels we have some slightly fancy tyres. These are Pirelli P0 Races which are a premium tyre and we've got them fitted with a premium latex inner tube. Right let's get to it. First up, well should we have the cheap wheel and the expensive tyre? Let's do this. Over to you Ollie. Right, I'm here with the more entry-level wheels and the premium tyres. I'm going to do run one. Alex isn't here, so uh, I'll just beep myself in. Beep, 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 beep. Let's go. These wheels are representative of what you find on a lot of sort of entry-level carbon bikes which in the grand scheme of things are sort of mid-priced bikes. And a lot of manufacturers supply bikes with good group sets with wheels like this because they envisage that you are going to upgrade them to something better. So it's really interesting to see, you know, what the difference is between these and a premium wheel set. Something that's immediately noticeable to me is on a course like this, which has these twisty bends, is when you bank it into the corner, the lateral stiffness of the wheel isn't as good as something more premium like the Jura Ace wheels. This isn't a huge thing. I don't feel like it's slowing me down, but it is just a nuance to the handling. And it's something that would be more evident if I was sprinting out the saddle, I might get a bit of brake rub. However, we bang on about it all the time. Tyres is the first thing you should always upgrade. It makes a huge difference. Biggest bang for your buck. We know the, the wattage savings from entry-level tyres to premium ones like this is huge. I really don't know which way this is going to fall. One thing is for certain, and that is both sets of wheels, regardless of price point, are equally capable of giving you access to roads like this. And for me, that's the main thing. I mean, being able to ride somewhere like this, that, that's what cycling's all about. Look at that. The smile on my face, the size of the smile on my face is the same, irrespective of both wheels and tires. Real one done. Right, time to swap the wheels. Ollie, this is your time to shine. You've got the expensive wheels and the cheap tyres. 
Let's do it. Give right. me some beeps. Boop, 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 boop. Oh, sh oh, at least you changed gear first. <laughs> okay, well, let's reset. You stay there, I'll come to you. You got your gears sorted? Yeah. Ollie, expensive wheel, <laughs> cheap tyre. This is your time to shine. Come on, beat me in. <laughs> boop, boop, boop. What are they? Boop. <laughs> Come on. Straight off the bat, these tyres feel slower. I might just be imagining it, but they do feel slower. And, well, I guess we're just gonna see if the aerodynamics of the wheels makes up for that, if indeed they are slower. So, the premium wheels, you know, like I said, they feel a lot stiffer, a lot, when you're going around corners, or, you know, I'm not doing it right now, but I know that when you get out the saddle, they, uh, yeah, you notice the stiffness. But something I hadn't anticipated is the grip of these budget tires. Now, going around these twisty corners, it becomes evident how important that is. Now, this rubber compound, it's a lot cheaper. It's a lot more plasticky. It's not conforming to the surface as well. And as a result, I just have so little confidence in the corners. I'm going markedly slower there, and I think that's a big area where I'm definitely losing time on the uh, more expensive tyres. So, a few stats for you here while Ollie is out doing the hard work. We're using 28mm tyres in both setups. Front pressures at 70 psi and the rear at 75. The cheap tyres are wire bead and butyl inner tubes, whereas the expensive tyres are folding bead and using latex inner tubes. The difference in weight between the two setups is actually pretty small, just 70 grams, and it's the expensive wheels and cheap tyres that are the lightest. But this setup costs over £2,000 compared to the cheaper wheels and expensive tyres, which is around £500 a quarter of the price. Now I'll put a breakdown of the weights up on screen now, and well, it's all down to on in his legs. Over to you. And something that's undeniable is the cool whooshing sound the deep sections make. Whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. I love that sound. Nice of you to join us, mate. I've been, I feel like I've been here for absolutely hours. I was ready, <laughs> I was ready to send a search party out of you. The sun's gone down. Oh. Um, well, presumably, after all of those runs, you've gathered plenty of data for us to I run do. through, have you? So, run one yeah. on the cheap wheels, nice tyres. Yeah. That was 31.07. Okay. And that was an average power of 201 watts, normalised power, 233 watts. Consistent, I like it. Good, sounds okay. nice. Uh, the second run on the fast wheels, cheap tyres, yeah. was 31. Drum roll. 22. Uh, so. What's that? Uh, 15 seconds? No. Yeah. Yeah. 15 seconds? Yeah. So the power was the same, 201 watts average, but the normalised power was. Uh, four watts more, so it was 237 watts. So that's what like, that means that's is... That's both going in the other well, way, yeah. Yeah, and the reason why that normalised power is higher yeah. is because I was slower in the corners. So to, to get the average power up to that, that same 201, I was having to, to go harder. a little bit harder yeah. on the straight bits. 
And that's that's like a big take home thing from these tires. That's down to the, the compound in the tires. Yeah, really. it makes sense. I mean, yeah. you see if you watch like Formula One, Any when they sport, use yeah. a different compound tire, like they have to switch to the wet tires. Yeah. Uh, if one car is on wet tires and the other cars are all on slicks and the conditions favor slicks, yeah. th th or they're even, so much slower, aren't or even they? Even when they go from like medium to hard compound, huge difference in yeah. performance. Same, same that's principles. That's the kind of thing that's happening here. Now, you mentioned the entire compound. I've got the label from our cheap tires, right. actually. It says, improved rubber and nylon compound for lower rolling resistance and increased grip. But it doesn't say what it's compared to. So I think our sort of test has highlighted yeah. maybe not quite as good as the label says. And, and, the, and the, 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 well, the big take-home message, I think, for people you know, mm. interested in tires is, it's not, we always bang on about rolling resistance. It's super important. Rolling resistance is super yeah. important, but grip is also important. And yeah. on a twisty road like this, it really does highlight it. So your tires are more important in terms of your speed and performance overall than your wheels, which is a good situation to have. Because, not by much, but, but yes. But it's a good situation to have because you say it's not by much. The difference though in price is a lot. Yeah. An expensive set of wheels compared to some premium expensive tires I mean, Dura set of wheels, £2,000. Premium pair of tyres, you're looking just over £100. Yeah, well, the other thing is I actually did a cheeky third run. Oh, yeah? On, no wonder I've on been here for so long. On the posh wheels and posh tyres. Dream wheel build setup. Yeah. Okay. Do 30, you know? 31 dead. What? Yeah. Um, so, so significant saving again. Yeah. Same comparable powers? Yeah. Okay. Two, well, yeah, 200 watts, actually, rather than 201, but yeah. Right. So, you know, you're, you're, you're obviously, that's to be expected, you're faster yeah. still, but it's still that thing of like, the tyres make more difference. So if you're in the market looking to upgrade your bike, go for the tyres and the shoes first because you get way more bang for your buck. Um, well, there you go, we've cleared it up. Before the sun goes down, should we wrap this thing up? Hope everyone's enjoyed it. I certainly have. You've got all of the miles and kilometres in your legs. Let us know what you thought of our little testing experiment in the comments section down below. and. What you'd like us to see, do it? Yeah, let's get some tapas. Mm. I am, oh, I'm ready for me tea. You look like you're wasting away. I'm ready for me tea. <laughs> right, see ya. <laughs>